Bavaria was Stalin's deputy prime minister, but his power base was under threat. The man most likely to depose him was Viktor Abakumov, who as head of Smersh had been in charge of the investigation into Hitler's whereabouts. It's all a question of competing toads in that security system. If you can get a second investigation going, which looks perfectly regular and straightforward, and you can then demonstrate that Smersh got it wrong, then you're obviously earning a lot of brownie points. Now, if on top of that, you're given the huge bonus that Hitler did actually escape from the bunker, then you can turn around to Stalin and say, look, Abakumov has got it completely and totally wrong. In February 1946, Beria ordered a new investigation into Hitler's fate. Operation Myth was underway. Its opening shot was an order for the bodies in Magdeburg to be exhumed and re-examined. But nothing happened. A handwritten letter from a frustrated Soviet official in Berlin testifies that the bodies were not forthcoming, despite a request to Comrade Abakumov. I think it's simply that Abakumov had things to hide. And then, you know, if this body does turn up and the autopsy does turn out to have been wrong, then it doesn't look good for Abakumov, or for the whole Smirsch organization. Without the bodies, the investigators turned instead to the eyewitnesses. Survivors from the bunker, now held in Soviet prisoner of war camps, were rounded up and brought here to Butyrska prison in Moscow. A team of interrogators was assembled to probe their accounts of Hitler's death. Rokos Misch had run the switchboard in the bunker. He was taken to Butyrska in February 1946. The questions were always the same, over and over, about Hitler, always about Hitler. Is that all? Yeah. Yes, whether he was dead, and that it wasn't Hitler who died in the bunker, but somebody else. But I can tell you again and again that it was Hitler, because I had seen him every day for five years. I told them, it was him, the corpse was Hitler's, and they always shouted, you're lying, you're lying. Misch was one of the four key witnesses brought to Butyrska. The others were Hitler's adjutant, Otto Günscher, his valet, Heinz Linger, and his personal pilot, Hans Bauer. These were four of the men closest to Hitler in the days before he died. Over the winter weeks of early 1946, they were kept in cells whose temperature fell to 20 degrees below freezing. Fed a starvation diet, they were always interrogated at night. And when not being interrogated, they were being tortured. During those weeks, each of the four main witnesses from the bunker threatened or attempted suicide. Es war sehr kalt drin. Ich habe mich zusammengerollt wie eine Schnecke ohne jene Decke. It was so cold there. I curled up like a snail with no blankets. I just couldn't take any more. I wanted to die. Then I got hold of some paper and wrote to the minister Beria. I said, I don't want to be beaten to death. I I'm a soldier, so I ask to be shot. Ich bin Soldat und ich bitte darum, dass ich erschossen werde. But Beria wanted the prisoners alive. From their testimony, his interrogators would build a unique picture of the last days in the Berlin bunker, providing final proof of Hitler's fate. Much of what follows is taken from those interrogations.
The Red Army had taken two years to advance the 1,200 miles from Stalingrad to the heart of Hitler's Reich. On April the 16th, 1945, it unleashed its opening barrage on Berlin and advanced towards the city. Yet in the fantasy world of the bunker, Hitler still dreamt of victory and spent hours poring over plans and models for the future Reich. I didn't realize we were so close to defeat. Hitler's pilot Hans Bauer was caught up in that fantasy as he told his cellmate in Moscow, a POW turned informer. The Fuhrer was still busy planning the new Reich. He spent hours examining the models for new buildings intended for Berlin and other places. So, so we all believed things couldn't really be that bad. I know the reports from the front weren't good, but we thought if the Fuhrer is looking at future building projects, the war couldn't be lost. We assumed he he must have some secret means to win the war. A secret weapon none of us knew anything about, like the atom bomb or some death ray of incredible force. Uh. On the 22nd of April, the first Soviet troops broke through to the suburbs of Berlin, while behind them, heavy artillery pounded the city centre. In the bunker that morning, Hitler's adjutant, Otto Günther, was discussing the explosions that could be heard on the Potsdamer Platz above them. We were trying to calculate how far away the Soviet troops were. Hitler was there in the room. I knew there were large caliber artillery shells. I thought they were being fired from 15 miles away about. Just after that, a military position meeting was convened. General Krebs was very pessimistic. Hitler wanted several armies, including Steiner's army group and 9th army to counterattack in the northwest. Krebs made it clear that such a move must fail. Hitler still ordered the counterattack and berated his generals for defeatism. But then, abruptly, he left the room. That was when, for the first time, Hitler acknowledged the military situation was hopeless. He said he would stay in Berlin, even if it meant he'd end up putting a bullet through his own head. Now, he had said that before, but this was the first time that I believed him. By now, Hitler's health was failing fast. He probably had Parkinson's disease. He also suffered from severe stomach cramps, insomnia, and fading eyesight. In the last year of his life, he was prescribed 92 different medicines. Many did more harm than good. Pervitin, an addictive amphetamine. Charcoal tablets containing strychnine. Eye drops with cocaine solution. What was Hitler's health like by that time? Describe his appearance to me. Heinz Linger knew Hitler as well as any. He was his valet. Sometime before, Hitler had developed a marked stoop. To keep up his strength, his doctor, Professor Morel, had prescribed injections of glucose and hormones of some kind. Hitler took these every other day. His right hand trembled a lot by then. That had started uh, sometime early in 1944. Also, his right eye was badly inflamed, had to be treated with with cocaine drops. 
I often had to pour those drops into his eye myself. In the last days of the war,